Hi there, in this video, what we're gonna do is look at this parallel RL circuit and analyze it to determine the voltages and the currents for the components in, this, in, in that particular circuit. And this example comes straight from an open source online textbook, so be sure to check out the links in the description and find out more, and you can actually walk through, uh, walk through this example yourself there as well. Okay, so to start off with, what I've got here is a table with a voltage, current, and impedance for the resistor, inductor, and, and for the total circuit. And I can start filling this table in with some values that I know already before I do any calculations. Well, the total voltage is 10 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. Because it's a parallel circuit, all of these devices, or both of these devices, are in parallel with the source, so they will also have a voltage across them of 10 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. Uh, what else do I know? Well, I know the impedances. The impedance of that resistor is five ohms, and it's all real impedance. So it's five plus J zero ohms, to put it in uh, vector notation in rectangular coordinates. Now I can, of course, convert this into polar coordinates very easy for this because there's no imaginary component. It's five ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees. The inductor, well, we know the inductance is 10 millihenries, and we can convert that 10 millihenries into an impedance, starting off with uh, the reactants. We know the value of the inductor. We know that it's a 60 hertz system. So the reactance is going to be two times pi times the frequency times the inductance. And that works out to 3.7699 ohms. So as an impedance, this is 0 plus J 3.7699. It's all imaginary impedance. And in polar coordinates, that is 3.7699 ohms with a phase angle of 90 degrees. The next easiest thing to calculate for the circuit is the current, the current for each one of these devices. Because I know the voltage across that resistor and I know the voltage across the inductor, I can very easily calculate those, in, those currents. The current through the resistor, we can use Ohm's law for this, the AC equivalent of Ohm's law, which will be the voltage across the resistor divided by the impedance of the resistor. To do this calculation, we divide the magnitude part, it gives me two amps, and we add the phase angles, zero degrees. Makes sense. The voltage has a phase of zero degrees, the current has a phase of zero degrees. There is no phase shift through a resistor. For the inductor, it's the same type of calculation. The voltage through the inductor, the voltage across the inductor, I should say, divided by the impedance of the inductor. It's that same voltage because everything's in parallel and the impedance is 3.7699 ohms. This time the phase angle is 90 degrees instead of zero degrees for the resistor. Do that calculation. So I divided 10 by 3.7699 to give me 2.6526 amps. And to get the phase angle, I take the numerator, subtract the denominator angle, and I get minus 90 degrees. Now to get the total current, I can add this current and this current. And the easiest way to add those two currents is if they are in rectangular form. So I need to convert these two currents into rectangular form. This one's really easy. That will simply be 2 plus J0. And the current through the inductor, that one's also easy. There is no real component. And the imaginary component is negative, 2.6526. So when I add those currents together, the current through the resistor only has a real component. So I don't, so it'll, I'll have two plus zero for the real part. And for the imaginary part, well, the resistor has zero imaginary component, whereas the inductor is all imaginary components. So I get minus J 2.6526. Now I'm going to convert this into polar coordinates. So to do that conversion, it'll be the square root of 2 squared plus 2.6526 squared. And then that gives me 
3.3221 amps. And to get a phase angle, I take the arctan of 2.6526 over 2, and that gives me minus 52.984 degrees. One last thing to do, and that's to figure out the total impedance that this voltage source sees. And a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to do it what I think is the easier way, and then I'll show you how you can do the more challenging. Well, it's not really challenging, just more steps involved in, in figuring out and in, in doing the arithmetic. Well, we can go to, so to do the easier way, we can use Ohm's law again. The total impedance is going to be equal to the total voltage divided by the total current. We know these two values, 10 volts with an angle of zero, and, and when we do the division, 10 volts divided by 3.3221, so 3.0102 ohm magnitude on the impedance, and the phase angle will be zero minus 52.984, so it gives me negative 52.984 degrees. And that's the total impedance. And of course, I could also have figured out the total impedance by going one over the inverse of the impedance of the resistor plus one over the impedance of the inductor. There's a few more steps of arithmetic that I need to do here, but it will give me the same answer as I got right there. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this example comes straight from an open source online textbook and you can find the link to it in the description. And there you'll find not only this example, but other examples like it, as well as more videos, more practice problems, and a lot more materials to help you with your electrical and electronic circuits courses. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.